Alaska, vast, wild, empty. It takes a pioneering personality to want to call this land home. That pioneering spirit was personified in four-time Iditarod champion Susan Butcher. Susan always felt a force luring her north to live deep in the Alaskan wilderness while teaching herself dog mushing. From Early on, I did not like the city. I knew I wanted to live in the wilderness. I had spent a lot of my life feeling like I was born in the wrong century. I had wanted to be a pioneer, going somewhere where no one had ever been before. And it was finally when I started winning the Iditarod and making a difference and really being a pioneer that I realized that I was born at the exact right time and to do the exact right thing. The right time indeed, Susan became an Iditarod champion, mother of two, and a two-time conqueror of Mount McKinley, and the only person to ever take a dog team with her to the top. Susan flourished in her adopted land. People who've heard the same calling have developed an intense love for Alaska, for adventure. Certainly living here takes a commitment to deal with cold, solitude, and winter darkness. And for those who move here, it can be a struggle to live so far from family and friends. It's the kind of place where you come to rely on your dogs as much as they do on you. That's certainly the kind of life Susan Butcher made for herself and her dog teams, the workhorses who led her to victory and became a part of her family. She raised them from puppies and transformed them into champions. When I first came up here to Alaska, I bought three dogs and I moved out into the Wrangell Mountains. I lived 150 miles from the closest road, 50 miles away from my closest neighbor, and started teaching myself how to mush dogs. And it was utopia out there. And I was out in the bush for three years, and then I came out and I ran my first Iditarod. And my plan was to run it one time, and I got hooked. And then I ran it 17 times in a row. Out on the windswept tundra of the Iditarod sled dog race, it takes a trust in yourself and your dog team just to survive. The race twists its way from Anchorage to Nome through 1,150 sleep-deprived miles of remote, unforgiving terrain. And it is an achievement just to finish. Susan ran this ultimate endurance challenge 18 times and came out on top in four of them. Mention her name and many form romanticized visions of what it's like to live in a cabin in the wilderness. Susan would tell you that the reality is also one of constant hard work. In many ways, it's a throwback to an earlier century. You know, when you live out in the bush and you live off the land and you have to hunt all your own food and you have to cut by hand, not with a chainsaw, all your wood to burn to keep yourself warm and it gets to be 50 and 60 below, you spend all day working. There is no thorough sit around and meditate about your belly button time. There is serious uh, survival out there. The wilderness certainly gave Susan strength. In December 2005, she was diagnosed with leukemia and fought it with the same intensity she gave to everything. But the disease was too strong. She passed away in August 2006. For her Alaskan friends and her fans around the world, the talents, vivacity, and presence of this extraordinary woman are sorely missed.